Hey pilots, got a fun uh, video for you tonight. I apologize, didn't come earlier in the week. Been a busy week around here and I need to let you know I'll actually be out of town next week. I do have some videos in the queue for you, but they will most likely be no commentary, just sort of gameplay. Uh, just so you can see some neat matches, but not necessarily get to hear my golden tones for a week. So sorry about that too. But uh, this one's a good one. Uh, Multi-rolls are a difficult aircraft cost to play. And I thought it might be good to see some of how I play them and some of the thought process between uh, offensive and defensive plays in multi-role. Sometimes you have to make some hard judgments about which way you want to go if you need to keep capping or defend the sector. And I had to make some decisions about that in this match. And so I wanted to talk you through that. So first of all, multi-roles, I never go to the center. Um, not in a match like this, essentially, especially, uh, because I'm down tier. This is a tier seven match, I'm in a tier six. And so I'm absolutely not going to go to the middle, uh, especially since the enemy team has an A7M. So a tier seven turn fighter, I know where he's headed. He's got to be headed to the middle first, and I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to go to a place where I can make an impact on the game immediately. And that's here. Notice I'll rudder down in that turn to keep some speed up in this pursuit. Uh, sometimes you can do that if you're trying not to lose too much speed in the turn. Rudder down and get some speed back. That was in my uh, 10 lessons in 10 minutes video in case you missed it. So the goal here is just to take this one, set up, queue up those bomber flights, because the other end of the map is, of course, a mining facility. And there's not much I can do about that. The Sakin, the knife here, has four very small bombs. And, uh, well, the guns are excellent, actually. Um, they're not going to do a lot of damage over the mining plant. So I need to get this one. I need to hope that my ascender buddy on my team catches the airfield for us. And you can see that he just was able to do that, which is fantastic. And so I got to lock this one down. And there we go. The help of the bots turning over the last of the capture points. We're there. Uh, we're still in trouble, though. We're in trouble because the enemy team has captured the mining plant. And the mining plant is essentially when you add up the points for the rollover, right? Every two minutes, you get 80 points. Um, essentially, when you do the math on that, a mining plant's worth three zones. So right now, point-wise, the enemy team has three zones, and we have two. So I'm going to need to figure out what to do with that. So after kind of finishing off the last of these XP-50, pretty sure I could handle that. The um, Sakin again, has excellent flight characteristics for a multi-roll. And then I see the A7N coming in. So I'm going to get some speed. I'm going to get up high because uh, I know I can out-dive him. The Sakin actually does still retain excellent dive speed. Um, and I assume that's based on the fact that it's, you know, Messerschmitt 109-ish in, in real life anyway. Um, so even though it's cast here as a multi-roll, and of course was not actually as good in real life, um, I can do these sorts of things here with that excellent dive speed. Uh, but in this case, the enemy A7M ignores me, which uh, is not good. So I'm able to just kind of lag roll and finish that off. So now I got some decisions to make. We're still down two to one. And uh, even though I've been able to clip the A7M, it's like, okay, what now? And I realize, oh my gosh, even after clipping the A7M, you know, the mining plant is still down. And we don't need to lose that. I can either run over and try to take one of the two garrison zones, which in the grand scheme of things are not super important, right? Or I can try to hold on to this. And the other thing I know is when I'm down tiered in a match like this, I'm slower than the other planes. And so because of that, crossing the map and trying to capture a sector while leaving this sector alone, this sector is probably going to get flipped while I'm gone, especially with a tier 7 aircraft like this flying unmolested in there, right? So and here I just let him go because I realize he's outside the zone. I'm watching the mini-map, and I want those 60 points back in this zone because I want to lose it. And you'll watch right here, boom, the enemy scored, you know, took down an aircraft. So now we're in about 15 capture points in the zone, but I'm able to clear him out and get us a little bit of breathing room. We're back up to 55 with that 40. Three, actually two, two enemies in this zone, but then of course the other player has come back in on the edge there. They dodged the dive attack. That was a big yawn that you didn't get to hear because I cut the mute, thankfully. <laughs> it's the XP-50 back again. And thankfully at the end of tier six, but you know, we're right on the edge of losing this. And I'm like, I, it's, this may flip. I may not have, a, have an option here. And now I'm getting pegged from behind by something. I'm using my boost to try and keep up because I really need those points, right? And it's the A7M who's come to play, but he's following me up, and I do a wing clip, so I ram him intentionally. Uh, essentially, I have more hit points than him. 
It's a weaker plane structurally and weight-wise than mine, and I put my wing through him. So when you ram someone, if you ram with a wing, it does less damage to you. I mean, ideally, you want to put your wing through their cockpit, all right? That's the best way to do it. But uh, in this case, it was wing to wing, but he was already so damaged it didn't matter. So um, I'm still desperate. We're still trying to get this thing shored up, and I absolutely whiff this dive. It's awful. Um, and then I accidentally drop a bomb on top of that, and that's awful because it goes flying off into the distance. So now we've lost it. Now, the silver lining of the cloud is, if you've been watching the rest of the screen, and hopefully you have, you know, we've been able to flip the mining plant, which is great. I guess because of having the airfield, and, you know, that sometimes helps for getting things in. But I need to get this back soon. So I'm going to will this guy down. And yes, I'm trading HP. But I'm trying to make sure that I catch him in the zone after the timer's gone, which I'm able to do. So that's 60 points right there. And that'll make it much easier for me to flip the zone. However, for the time being, I need some hit points back. So I'm going to come back out of that zone. Out of the, and uh, hopefully I have the AA envelope a little bit and come back in. But I noticed that, you know, there's the other ground attacker in there, the L2T, that he's almost dead. So I'm going to have to overcap this zone because there's no way I rescue that guy. Uh, with these two air defense aircraft floating around. So I'm going to try and clear them out as fast as I can, but I'm pretty sure they're going to get that ground attack ground back, right back at where I started from. So they do still have one bomb left, thankfully. And there goes my ground attacker, so he's gone. Thankfully, I'm not the only one in the zone. There's some bots helping me there. So I drop a bomb there. And that gives me a small target, and I get that, which you saw, maybe saw at the top there as it's rolling over, is uh, the bot aircraft on my team actually rolled a medium target as well. So um, between the you know, points that I put in and the points that the bots were able to put in, we're able to flip the zone back. And now we've got, uh, you know, we've lost the airfield, but we still hold on to the mining plant. So my next goal is going to be to go back on the offensive and snag that airfield, but I need to be strategic about how I do it because I'm not a light fighter, and there's all sorts of enemy aircraft over there. And I have to decide how I want to approach this. I'm thinking about the 109Z. I'm thinking about do I defend or attack. And I'm like, yeah, I could probably grab the 109Z. The bot's been diving and turning a lot. And these guns have really good range. The cannons on it do. Uh, kind of like the Spitfire line. These are 20s. Um, just really, you know, about 800, almost 800 meters. Uh, it's pretty great. But it's not happening. We need the airfield, especially since they've recapped one of the two garrisons, as you see in the corner there. And so uh, I want to I want to put my foot on the gas. I want to go back to cap in a zone rather than defending. So I switch gears again, defense to offense, or really still on offense. I just haven't left this side of the map. But I might come up from below. Uh, and on this map, it's an interesting tactic coming in from the bottom like this, right? Uh, and I've got my guy there drawing fire, so I'm going to clear his tail, and that's going to be an automatic 40 capture points for us. It's pretty easy. And he's going to continue to do his thing. And I see the enemy A7M is coming in again, but he's not concentrating on me, he's concentrating on the Ascender. Maybe he doesn't see me, don't know, but I set him on fire, and he continues to ignore me. And so I'm just going to finish off what I started to begin with. So what should have been a dangerous aircraft for me, uh, in both these cases, ended up being not as big a deal. And thankfully, we flipped the zone right there, and the air defense aircraft is not able to burn me. Um, and the other nice thing about multi-rolls is the hit points. Sometimes you got to rely on that to get those last capture points, roll the zone over. And sometimes you lose your aircraft as a result of that. In this game, fortunately, I did not. With my propeller uh, bent, i got to go to the ground here, uh, make sure I don't lose speed. And I'm going to clear this guy out. Uh, we're uh, up. We've lost the mining plant again, but we're so far up at this point. It's not going to matter, right? Um, we just kind of keep it going. And the Ascender has squatted here in the middle, which is what he should do. It's a great defensive fighter for this airfield and this map in particular. And then I decided to grab the XP-50, but there's no need. We've already we've already won. So 12k points, and uh, we do get the multi-roll medal over there. Um, and uh, so that's excellent. That's for capture points, if I remember right. It's a Lambert. Uh, but, you know, just work in the edges as I tend to do in multi-rolls. So even as a down-tiered multi-roll, you can have an impact, right, on the map. 
and uh, you just kind of you kind of work those outer zones, right? And be careful about how you come in. So, uh, 14 kills, uh, three zones captured, and uh, a good bit of aerial and uh, ground uh, damage, both on that, which was excellent. Uh, this was back during Candy Cane, so it's an older replay. But I wanted to come back to it for that reason, and and especially because multi rolls are on our mind right now with the new Tempest coming in. You know, how do you play them? Uh, the Tempest is not going to be a plane I take to the middle of the map. Um, I'm going to take it around the edges. And it looks to be that sort of plane that's more um, tuned for dealing with, you know, slower moving, heavier aircraft or bots on the edge of the arena. So, and you can see here, uh, I'm going to pause it here so you can see, you know, it was an interesting matchup. I, I did more personal points, right? Uh, the XP-55 uh, got that airfield for us, which ended up being critical, right? The A7M did not grab the middle and, and um, kind of tried to go for um, the you know, command um, center where I was at. It's probably not a bad idea. I think in his shoes, I might would have done that too. Uh, just trying to flip that. The, the hard thing about that is the A7M is a light fighter, no bombs or anything like that. And command centers, you can't flip it just by killing aircraft, right? You, you need to do some ground targets too. So you would have needed some help for that. Uh, the B-17 did fairly well as well. I'm pretty sure that's how they got the cap both times, that B-17 rocking things. And we didn't have a counter for him, right? Uh, there's no way an XP-55 or a, a you know, S-199 are getting up there to deal, especially not with a B-17. So we got to create our own pathway in this. And this is one of the interesting fun things about multi roles is they, they can do a couple of different things, right? They can go on the offensive, can go on the defensive, and, and perhaps more than any other tier in the game, they are functional when down tiered, right? Uh, down tiered bombers are going to struggle. Down tiered ground attack aircraft are going to struggle. Down tiered heavies, right, sometimes have an issue if they're not a, a super powerful heavy uh, because the tier seven light fighters can chase them down and the tier seven heavies can beat them head on probably, right? And light fighters as well. Um, you know, light fighters probably second best to multi roll, mixing it up when down tier. But um, I really do think multi rolls have the best shot at impacting and influencing a match when down tiered, which may be the reason that I fly them as much as I do, one of the reasons anyway. So, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I am going to, like I said, going to throw out some videos for you guys next week, even though I am not going to be uh, in the saddle personally, um, but I'm going to try and get some things done for you and keep some content coming out for you. Um, and uh, we're fortunate to have uh, people rolling out videos again, which is fantastic. If you're not in the Discord, go in the Discord uh, for World of Warplanes, go into the videos section and check just how many videos. I think we've had four or five videos from content creators in the last week. So I didn't feel too bad about leaving you guys scratch uh, since we had some more out there. And that's fantastic, man. It makes me feel good uh, to know that we've got that. I would love for VBAT to come back and do some more videos. I'd love for Postal to be rocking a little more as well. But, you know, for the time being, to have the people we have doing what they're doing uh, is great. And uh, hopefully we get even more of that. So until then. Uh, enjoy your weekend. I hope it goes good for you. Get some extra credits in there. Don't forget to pick up the BV uh, uh, P203. Uh, it goes off sale on Monday morning, so you have through the weekend to clear that out, and you might want to grab it. And uh, when I get back, uh, like I said, I'll put up some videos next week for you guys, maybe probably some no commentary gameplay ones. But when I come back from vacation the week after that, uh, we are going to take a look at the P38L Lightning and the BVP 203 uh, both of which I will have in my possession and uh, we'll take a look at them and see what we're going to do with them. I'm not keen on doing the videos beforehand, like uh, should you buy this or not buy this, because I think that's more in your hands, and there's lots of good videos about that out there. Uh, mine is, you know, once you have them, what do you do with them? <laughs> and uh, so I want to kind of rock through those uh, two with you and kind of show you what they can do and, and see if we can have some fun with it. So until then, enjoy the game, enjoy each other, you know, have a great, great time in this community, and, um, uh, you know, like I said, sign to the Discord if you get a chance. Throw a like if you like it. Uh, uh, feel free to share to your clan or your group or fellow players, and I hope to catch you on the flip side. Good luck and good hunting.